What's going on, guys, and welcome back to WWE Network and Show, where every single week I, Graham G.S. and Matthews, break down all the original content that I watch on the WWE Network. Today we're talking the latest episode of The Edge and Christian Show, entitled Straight of Greenwich, Season 2, Episode 4. So instead of airing after Raw on Monday, they actually pushed it forward one day to air it after TLC on Sunday, which was cool. I apologize for the delay. Of the I would have gotten it up sooner. I would have, but, you know, I had to talk about the new Chronicle special with Becky Lynch, which aired... Um, on Saturday. So we have a lot of great new network content from the Chronicle special, which I did talk about here on Network Control this past week. So be sure to check out that. The original special, obviously, my review of it. Um, it was a great little Chronicle. Many, many Chronicles, only 25 minutes. They're usually about an hour. Um, yeah, Edge and Christian this week. Edge and Christian show this week. Entertaining as always. Let's get right to it. So again, it's called Straight Out of Greenwich. You could probably assume what it has to do with when it go when you know assuming they go to Greenwich and they encounter the one and only Pete Gass one of the members of the Mean Street Posse but we'll get to that when we get to that they kick off this episode with some like agent producer whatever um backstage knocking on the door the um dressing room door of Jeff Jarrett and they ask him to do the Edge and Christian show he's like I'm not doing it unless they you know get lights in my hat up my salary do this and that blah 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 and they're like, okay, well, if we do all of that for you, will you then appear on the Edge and Christian show? And he's like, of course. And he's like, after all, you know, I just signed the South Paul Regional Wrestling, which is that, you know, little promotion shit they put on the network and their YouTube channel a few years ago, which was very entertaining. Yeah, they mentioned that here. He goes, yeah, I hear Vince Russo. He didn't say Vince Russo, but he said, yeah, I hear Russo is the new head writer over there, and I know I'm going to make an impact. And he winks. I mean, obviously, a little nod of Impact Wrestling wouldn't be the first time, probably won't be the last time. I thought that was cute. Um, anyway, we have our next segment here on the show with um, Edge and Christian getting kicked out of a Greenwich restaurant for not being fancy enough. They get kind of kicked out of the restaurant by these, like, what they call, what Christian calls a bunch of Harvey Wimplemans. And then they say, well, the only way that we can become one of them, if you can't beat them, you got to join them. And there's only one man we can seek out to become a member of the Greenwich community. Um, in the meantime, we have a segment called Sponsor a Heel, hosted by Becky Lynch in disguise and, like, dressed up and everything. Um, it's basically like, oh, the heels never have it, like, great. They always get the shit kicked out of them. They're always embarrassed on TV, blah, blah, blah. But if you sponsor a heel today, and the Riot Squad stars in this too, then they'll, you know, flourish. Miz became Intercontinental Champion. You know, the Mountie is successful, blah, blah, blah. Like, all this other shit, which is great. But, um, yeah, she was like, yeah, sponsor a heel. Call this number, 1-800-SPONSOR-A-HEEL, blah, blah, blah. I thought that was very funny, too. Then we have a spoof of the Mary Povich show. I have no idea what the fuck this shit is. I think it's one of those shows where they bring on people who are like, oh, you fucked this woman, like you had her baby, like now you have to deal with it. Like, it's one of those shows, and they spoof that here with Christian playing Mary Povich. That's how you even pronounce it. If not, I don't care. The guest is Heath Slater. He's told that you had babies with this woman, this woman, this woman. He initially denies it. And then it comes down and says, well, if I did have sexual intercourse with all these women, I don't know if he says those exact words, but that's essentially what he's implying, then I will be the best father I can possibly be. And Slater's gimmick, obviously, is that he has kids. So now he has a lot of kids and he has to take care of them. <laughs> so that was great. Christian played his role wonderfully as well there. Um, we have a new commercial for new wrestling buddies. And they start out the commercial by saying... Do you have no one that you can watch the wrestling pay-per-views with? It, are your friends um, no longer fans of wrestling? Is your girlfriend slash wife upstairs binge-watching a new boring TV show? Never fear. Order the new Wrestling Buddies. And it's edging Christian like in a box. And this guy orders Christian. And, like, and they're saying like, oh, you can put him in any five-second pose that you want. And um, he'll enjoy the action with you. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it was great and then the wife orders one so edge comes in the mail for the wife the guy gets christian and the guy goes oh wife you got a wrestling buddy too does that mean that um you're gonna watch the pay-per-view with us she goes no no we're just gonna go upstairs and you know watch our boring television show because the narrator of the commercial goes everybody it's like it's um it's accurate to like uh what is it anatomically correct 
meaning every body part is as if it would normally be on a human being. <laughs> so the wife orders one, implying that she's going to have sex with Edge upstairs. I thought that was great, too. Really funny. Um, Edge and Christian then camp out on what they what turns out to be the Hardy compound, then being visited by Vanguard 1 and Woken Matt Hardy. Yes. And he's um, essentially giving them bedtime stories, reading Goodnight Moon. And um, he says, good night, blah, 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 good night, blah, blah, blah. And then he says, good night to the majestic owl. Good night, Mr. Nordholm. Obviously, the owl was the um, the logo of Anthem Wrestling for a while. Uh, Ed Normholm, it was the guy that was uh, responsible for taking the broken, woken shit and holding it hostage and all that other stuff. <clears throat> Before, um, you know, obviously, they gave the rights to Matt, so which was really cool. So I thought that was, I mean, obviously, they're on good terms. And now this was not a shot taken at Ed Nordholm, but I thought that was a cool little nod to the uh, Woken Broken Saga from last year. Um, even Edge goes, oh, sorry, Matt, did we intrude on your property? Christian's like, oh, it's okay, Matt. You know, Edge was intrude has been in intruding on your property for years, you know, implying that, you know, you know, insinuating that it was Lita that he stole, who was the girlfriend of Matt Hardy at that time, many, many years ago. And then Matt Hardy goes, oh, everything happens for a reason. So that whole thing was great. Um, Edge and Christian then meet up with Pete Gas at a Greenwich library, and they're like, we want to become one of you. We don't want to be losers. We want to become one of you. And while there, Pete Gas plugs his new book, which I didn't even add. I didn't even know he had a new book, but I guess he does. And they practice dancing. He's like, oh, you got to dance like a, Gren uh, a member of the Greenwich community. You got to dance like one of us. And they start dancing all goofy. We then have the next installment in the Chumpstain Challenge called Who Dat, where Edge and Christian have to name the name of the Survivor Series team. So, like, for example, they show a picture of a team from, like, the 80s. It's usually the 80s or 90s. We have one picture of, like, Team Rated RKO, which was such an easy one for a Christian to get. Um, but, yeah, they show pictures of the 80s and 90s Survivor Series teams. And then Edge and Christian have to say what their name was. What were they called? And they get, like, the first five wrong before a Christian finally gets the Rated RKO one right. And then the Rude Brood. Uh, Rude's Brood or whatever it was called from like the 80s or the early 90s or whatever. So Christian goes 2-0 over Edge. The Chumpstain Challenge meter is now tied 2-2 two two, uh, with Christian winning this Chumpstain Challenge. Um, we then had the report card with Jeff Jarrett with him kind of reading off. This is how you say my name. J-E-double-F-J-A-double-R-E-double-T Jeff Jarrett. Double J Jeff Jarrett. And it's all a thing and then he's teaching this to the Los Conquistadors, and they go back and forth. That was a cool segment. And then we end the show with Edge and Christian being quizzed about their knowledge of Greenwich by, like, the ultimate boss, like the evil boss of the whole thing, the um, instructor, blah, blah, blah. As you can guess, Edge and Christian pass with flying colors. They have some troubles at certain points, but they end up um, flourishing and end up, you know, passing the quiz, and they're official full-time members of the Greenwich community. And as you could probably guess... The ultimate head honcho of the community as the e big evil boss that they're talking to here that we don't see his face for the first five minutes or so ends up being the one and only Shane McMahon who was responsible for bringing in the Mean Street Posse to begin with many, many years ago. So they celebrate, they rap to close out the episode as Edge and Christian now fit in with the rest of the Greenwich community. Um, so that was Straight out of Greenwich Season 2, Episode 4 of the Edge and Christian Show. Really entertaining stuff, as always. Check it out on the network under the Originals category on the network. So, again, the next episode, I think, is set to air this coming Monday. This one was um, only different because we had the TLC pay-per-view on Sunday. So, they aired it on Sunday instead of Monday. But, hey, it freed up my Monday night, which was great. So, after Raw, anyway. But, um, yeah, be sure to check it out on the network. Very entertaining stuff, as always. If you're not tuning into the Edging Christian Show, what the hell are you waiting for? It's far more entertaining than Raw. It's by far one of the more entertaining shows I've seen on the network in some time. Every bit as great as Season 1, if not better. So check it out on the network at your leisure. With all that being said, guys, be sure to like this video, drop a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the content, or subscribe to the channel for more content. I'm getting that mixed up there. Uh, so close to the holiday season, I must be drinking a hell of a lot of eggnog here. But nonetheless, um, next edition of Network and Show will likely be breaking down the next edition of the Edge and Christian Show, set to go up probably on Tuesday, um, unless there's something air something else that airs on the network between now and then. Until then, guys, thank you for checking out my reviews. As always, I appreciate the support. We'll be back then. Until then, folks, enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'm Graham Houston Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.